So if I'm trying to think of the positives for having small wrists, the one positive I can think of is the fact that I know a lot of watches that will actually fit my wrist. So much so that I can make two videos about what watches to buy for smaller wrists. If you guys have not seen part one of this series, definitely go check it out on my channel. I'll link to it down in the description below. But what's going on everybody? My name is Teddy Baldassar, and in this video we are gonna be talking about part two, another list of watches best for smaller wrists. Really quick, all of these watches are contemporary watches, no vintage pieces in this one. We'll do another video about that in the future. And I'm going to be listening off pretty quickly, just gonna go over the standard terms. You guys kinda know the drill if you've been a viewer of my content for a while. And if you guys stick around till the end, I'm gonna list off a few grail pieces that I would love to have at some point in my life. So guys, without further ado, let's jump into the video. And for today's list, we're gonna be looking at a German manufacturer, Zinn. And this Zinn that we're looking at is the Zinn 1736 Applied Indices. Well, this watch does look elegant, but it somehow manages to have 100 meters water resistant rating. Uh, that's a typical just over manufacturing uh, that Zinn has been really known for. Fantastic quality, uh, retails for around $1,700, has a 36 millimeter case, and is powered by an ETA 2892A2 movement. Now we're starting to get into Omega territory, and the Omega that I want to look at here is the Omega DeVille Coaxial. This watch is powered by an Omega Caliber 2500 automatic movement, retails for just over $3,500 and has a 39 millimeter case. So as you guys probably know, I'm a big fan of Nomos. One of you guys sarcastically commented in the comments down below about me not mentioning a Nomos in part one, but don't worry, we have definitely a couple Nomos is here in part two. And the first Nomos that we're gonna be looking at is the Nomos Club. The Club comes in at a starting price of around $1,500, is powered by their Alpha Manual Caliber movement, and is 100 meters water resistant with a 36 millimeter case. Now from Germany, jumping over to Switzerland, we have the Long Jeans flagship Heritage 38 millimeter. Uh, this comes in at around $1,700, is an automatically powered watch powered by Long Jeans L615. It's an ETA based movement and has a 38.5 millimeter case with 30 meters of water resistance. Next, we have the Omega Speedmaster Reduced. For guys like me who love the Omega Speedmaster but could not really manage to sport the full-size moon watch on the wrist, this is the perfect solution. It can be found used for just around $2,000, has a 39 millimeter case, and is automatic powered by Omega's 3220 movement, and is water resistant up to 30 meters. Jumping back now to Long Jeans and their Heritage line, and this is the Long Jeans Heritage 1918. This is a vintage inspired Long Jeans that I really love the look of. This watch comes in from $17 to $1,800, again powered by an L615 movement. I love this watch's vintage look. Again, I have criticized it for the date window, but really, really elegant looking design, and I, I just am a big fan of this watch. Next, we have Breitling on our list, and like the Speedmaster, here is another watch that provides a more compact version for smaller wrists in mind. And the Breitling Super Ocean Heritage, this is actually a watch we can get for 38 millimeters. Although this watch is hard to grab now, you can find it used from $2,000 to $3,000. It is powered by a Breitling Caliber 37. It's an ETA 2894-2 based movement and has a 38 millimeter case and is water resistant up to 200 meters. And now we have a watch that's not necessarily my favorite. I think I just see it everywhere that I've kind of just been fatigued with it, but nevertheless, an amazing watch. And that is the Tudor Black Bay 36. This watch is often found higher than $2,000, but definitely can be found on the secondary market for less. It comes in with a 36 millimeter case and is water resistant up to 150 meters and is powered by an ETA 28. 24 automatic movement. Next we have a brand that I don't really know if I gave them enough justice or give them enough play on this channel and that is Grand Seiko and we're going to be looking at the SBGR251J. This watch retails for $3,800, has a 37 millimeter case, is automatically powered by a caliber 9S65 and is water resistant up to 100 meters. And now we have a watch here that I'm actually currently wearing on my wrist and that is a Nomos Ahoy Neomatic. This watch is powered by Nomos's automatic DUW3001 movement and has a 36 millimeter case and retails just over $4,000, but you can definitely find it for cheaper. I certainly did. 
This watch has many different dial options. I opted to go with the white dial, but there's some really funky colors that you can go with as well. It's a lot of fun. It really screams summertime and it is water resistant up to 200 meters as well. Now we have a watch that I think a lot of people overlook, especially from a brand that is always in the spotlight and that's Rolex. But here we have the Rolex Air King 34 millimeters. And this watch is powered by an automatic 3130 movement. It retails for around $5,000, but you can certainly find it for much, much less. And it comes in that iconic oyster case which is water resistant up to 100 meters. So the problem with a lot of pilots watches is that they're definitely usually oversized, but this one is one that I am a big fan of. I love the aesthetic of it, plus the sizing of it. And that is the IWC Pilot's Watch Automatic 36. This watch retails just under $4,000, has a 36 millimeter case, and is automatically powered by a 35111 caliper movement and is 60 meters water resistant as well. So the next three watches are definitely more expensive watches, but they're three personal grails of mine that I kind of just wanted to share with you guys because I don't think I talk about that and where the aspirations are for me as a collector. Plus they fit the description for today's video and being for smaller wrists. First up, we have the Cartier Tank Louise. Well, this watch really is a personal grail for me. It is, can be purchased with a coarser mechanical movement. And I think it's one of those watches where you really can't go wrong with either. It retails for around $10,000, has dimensions of 33.7 millimeters by 25.5 millimeters. There's just the elegance of this watch. I think it is the epitome of a dress piece. It's all just so well done and so elegant. I don't think you really can do much classier than this watch. Next, we have some of my favorite watches ever made. And I know it's kind of a cookie cutter watch, but as soon as I saw them, I was a huge fan of them. And that is the Patek Philippe Calatrava. Personally, we, I wanna look at the 5119 series. I'm a big fan of the white and yellow gold versions. These watches have a 36 millimeter case and are powered by a 215 PS manual winding movement. So if you take a quick snapshot of my collection, you can see that I am a big German watch manufacturer fan. Um, so I wanted to mention the king of German watch manufacturing, Langa. And the specific Langa that we're gonna be looking at is the Saxonia Thin 37 millimeters. This is a total grail piece of mine and really comprises all the elements and why I love German watchmaking. Beautiful finishing, a timeless minimalist design, and sizing with perfect proportions that would really wear perfectly on my wrist. This watch comes in with a 37 millimeter case and it is crazy thin. Thinnest watch Long has actually ever offered. Uh, it is powered by a hand winding movement and is powered by a caliber L093.1. And as you'd expect, this watch is up there in price. In other words, you can have it at the equivalent of a four-door sedan on your wrist for $15,000. So guys, what do you think of this list? I was told in a prior video when I started getting these lists up to 30 watches that it was almost too much. So I tried limiting them, but that also creates challenges for me because I have to leave out some great watches. So what are watches that I totally missed here? I'd love to hear them down below in the comments. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. Also be sure to hit that bell icon so you know when I release content. I can't thank you guys enough for your continued support up to this point. It's amazing to see the channel grow and I can't wait to continue to grow in the future. I have some really fun stuff planned. But until next time guys, be well and I will see you all very soon.